By the way, tonight we're going to be digging into the prosecutor's decision to drop criminal charges against those Atlanta police officers, Garrett Rolfe and Delvin Brosnan. 11 Alive's Joe Hinkie now live outside the Fulton County Courthouse with details on how they came to this decision today. Joe? Well, Ron, then uh, Fulton County District Attorney Paul Howard charged Officer Garrett Rolfe with murder back in 2020, and he filed an aggravated assault charge against Devin Brazen at the same time. This case, though, last year was assigned, reassigned to that special prosecutor. Today, he made the announcement that the charges will be dropped, and he told me right now he is putting together a court file and that he'll be sending to the Fulton County courts behind me to formally drop those charges. Here we have a peaceful encounter that all of a sudden becomes a violent encounter. And not only does it become a violent encounter, it is quickly changing. Prosecutors Pete Scandalakis and Danny Porter walked through the body camera, cell phone, and surveillance videos this afternoon. They detailed how officers Garrett Rolfe and Devin Brosnan attempted to arrest Rayshard Brooks for a suspected DUI in June of 2020. After talking with Brooks for more than a half hour, Porter says the situation turned violent. I don't think there's any other way to describe it, but Brooks proceeds to be the crap out of the two officers. During a um, scuffle, Scandalakis says Brooks knocked the officers to the ground. Brosnan's head hits the pavement and he suffers a concussion and Brooks grabs the officer's taser and fires it. He can incapacitate the officers. A taser in the hands of a person who is not trained can also be deadly. Prosecutors today said under state law, the taser in Brooks's hands could be considered a deadly weapon, allowing officers to respond with deadly force if it was used against them. Scandalakis says his team broke down the videos frame by frame, including when Brooks began running with Rolf chasing him. Brooks turns back and fires the taser again. Scandalakis says Rolf responded 1.1 seconds later, firing his gun at Brooks three times in half a second, hitting Brooks. Viewing the evidence through the eyes of the officers, prosecutors determined they needed to drop the charge. Given the quickly changing circumstances, was it objectively reasonable that he used deadly force? And we conclude it was. And Scandalakis today also acknowledged the social climate around the country back in 2020. This case happened shortly after George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery were both murdered in separate cases. But Scandalakis said the facts of those cases and this case are drastically different. And it is the facts in this case specifically, he said, that made up his mind to uh, drop the charges against both officers.